Okay. Um, today's topic is winter weather, and we are going to start with some announcements, do a quick overview of Missouri No Wrong Door, um, show some ways to use Charting the Life Course Integrated Support Star, and learn new and ideas, uh, new ideas and strategies for winter weather and safety. So for some announcements to start with, um, we are having our eighth annual Charting the Life Course Showcase. It's going to be from April 23rd to 25th in Kansas City. Um, the registration is available now. Um, we have some exciting new things happening this year. We're going to be doing a really cool tech event on the second day, um, and we're very excited for that. So talking a little bit more about integrating services and supports, um, sometimes when an individual has only formal government paid supports and services, um, it can kind of um, keep a person away from their family or their community or not integrate them as well um, into those things. So we want to integrate all those different types of supports and services that I just talked about. That way, anybody has um, access to the, the community life and any kind of um, life goals that they want um, having those supports integrated. So a little bit more about Charting the Life Course, if this is the first time you're hearing about it. Um, Charting the Life Course is a framework and a set of tools that help you think differently about your vision for a good life, setting high expectations, and integrating multiple types of supports. Um, it helps to organize ideas, visions, and goals, as well as problem solve, navigate, and advocate for supports. Um, one of the pieces of charting the life course on this 
far right side of the screen is our life domains. Um, and the life domain that we're going to be talking about today is safety and security, um, which is anything from your personal safety to financial security, making sure that you know your rights, um, all those kinds of things. Um, but today, Kara is going to talk specifically about assistive technology for winter weather as it pertains to safety and security. So I'll go ahead and pass it over to Kara. Thank you, Angelina. Um, Angelina, can you make it to where I can turn on my video too? It won't let me do that. If not, you guys can just hear my lovely voice. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started while she's doing that. Um, so like she said, I will be talking about um, some assistive technology for winter. Um, I want to give uh, credit to Scout for this too. If you have been on some other uh, mod presentations, you've probably seen Scout. Um, he did a lot of work on this presentation as well. Um, but he is uh, in Florida right now for the ATIA conference. So he is probably not worrying um, a whole lot about assistive technology for winter. Um, probably doesn't have to deal with the ice and the snow. So um, just a little bit jealous, but it's all right. Um, and then I also wanted to say too, this is not gonna be um, super tech heavy. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a mix of both assistive technology. And then also just some things to um, keep in mind, um, just some tips um, and things like that, uh, that you can do to, um, you know, prevent falls and just be extra safe in the winter. Also, I apologize. It will not let me edit the meeting since it started. So <laughs> fortunately, you guys are just going to have to hear Kara's voice and not get to see her today. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Um, so winter preparedness, um, again, these are just tips, uh, you know, as you know, I know last month it was like 60 degrees and this month, um, not so much. We really, uh, got hit with winter and we got hit with winter hard. Um, not, you know, we may not have been very prepared for it. So, um, these are just some good tips for everybody to keep in mind. Um, uh, but especially those that have disabilities, um, and uh, those that are elderly, um, wear extra layers, keep extra blankets, both at home and when traveling. Um, I know a few weeks ago when we, you know, kind of got hit with the winter storm, um, a lot of people lost power. And so just having extra blankets at home, that's always good. Um, and when traveling too, I know I personally am guilty of, um, you know, if I'm just going to run out and like go through a drive through, I might not be wearing like the proper layers or the proper um, footwear, like I might be in slippers instead of, you know, boots. Um, but a uh, fun little story. I, this was several years back. It was actually on Christmas. Um, I was traveling around to see different family and uh, my car was not the uh, most reliable car. But um, it ended up overheating, and so I had to pull over on the side of the road, and I could not let my car continue to run because it was overheating. So, um, again, it was Christmas. It was cold. So, I, thankfully, I had, you know, good clothes at the time, and I had a good jacket. I had to sit there, and, again, it was on Christmas, so I had to wait a while before somebody could come and uh, pick me up and get my car towed. Um, so I was thankful that I had those um, extra layers at that time. So I always keep like an extra blanket in my car, um, keep food, keep bottled water stocked. I know a lot of people's pipes have been um, freezing and even, um, you know, people have had burst pipes. So even keeping like jugs of water is always good. Um, and then when you, you know, are thinking about food too, make sure it's not just like the bread, milk, and eggs, um, you know, stuff that will go bad fast. Make sure that you have some good um, non-perishable items. Um, have a backup power supply. Um, there's, sorry, that was a little typo there. Um, Evergy, uh, Angelina, will you click on that link right there? It says Evergy Medical Program. Um, so this is, you know, like we have Evergy in Kansas City. Um, so, they have, I was just kind of looking into if you, uh, do have like some, um, you know, like life support equipment. So this is just their page for, uh, you know, like for medical customers. 
It doesn't guarantee, they even say on here, make sure that you have a backup power supply. Like if you do rely on like life support equipment at home, uh, make sure you have a backup power supply for that. But they do have a program that um, if you qualify, you can apply for it. And um, like it says on here that they'll give you a special number to call during outages. So it's not going to guarantee that, you know, that they're going to get it up and running really fast, but they might put, you know, you know, more towards the top of the list um, to try to get your power back up and running. Um, but again, you know, just make sure that you have a backup power supply if it's something that you um, really do rely on. Uh, make sure that you charge, especially if you know if um, snow is coming, charge your phones, hearing aids, communication devices. Um, if you're dependent on dialysis or any other kind of life-sustaining treatment, make sure you know the location and availability of more than one facility. This is just good for any time, but especially, you know, as the weather kind of gets, um, you know, a little bit more complex, a little dicey, um, you want to know some different places that you can go for those. Um, and then if you have a communication disability, just make sure that you plan um, how you're going to communicate with others if your equipment stops working, if you don't have your equipment, um, you know, make sure that you have some extra like laminated cards, make sure you have um, that information available too. If you are in a situation where um, you need some emergency um, help, uh, especially like, you know, traveling, the roads have been icy, especially this week. You never know what's going to happen. I've seen, you know, videos this week of cars sliding all over roads. Um, so if you are, you know, if you're traveling during the snow, during, you know, that icy times, um, make sure that you have like a medical alert tag or a bracelet. So if something, you know, does happen, you do get into an accident, um, make sure, and this goes for anybody, not just uh, those with a communication disability. But if you are in a situation where you become unconscious, you can't communicate, and there's information that you need um, paramedics to know, like you have diabetes, you are prone to seizures, you have autism, anything like that, um, again, good all the time, but especially um, especially necessary when, uh, you know, roads are um, not the best right now. And then just make sure that somebody is checking on you. Um, you know, make sure that you have a neighbor looking out for you. Make sure that um, family members are calling and uh, and checking, especially during that like zero degree weather. Um, always have somebody check on you. All right. Oh, and this is Scout, you know, no more falls. <laughs> um, so just some quick tips. Um, talk with friends about what you use for falls to prevent them. Um, talk about what you use. Ask them what they use. Um, it might not always be like a specific assistive tech device. It could just be like a creative solution that they have. Um, and then pay attention to tasks that generate um, any kind of fear or anxiety about falling. Like what can you change about that task? Can you add in some um, extra like, you know, handrails? Can you move some things out of the way? Um, just keep those things in mind. All right, and then let's dive in. All right, so um, as far as like mobility supports, walkers and canes, um, make sure that you check and uh, the feet, the cane tips, make sure that it's good, you know, that you have good rubber, that it's in good condition before, you know, winter, um, but better late than ever. Um, consider rem uh, removing the walker glides and having like a tennis ball or a rubber cap, anything that can give you a little bit more traction. Um, and then, you know, walkers, they're, made of metal metal is going to get really cold when you're outside so add some kind of if you don't already have it some kind of non-slip um, insulating material on it um because if if it's cold if you grab that metal and it is ice cold you're not going to want to hold on to that um, or you're not going to want to hold on to it well so just adding some kind of material on it um so you can have your hands on it um, and get a good grip, that's going to obviously help you um, in a situation to prevent a fall. Um, just like you would wipe off your feet as you come inside from when it's like snowy, make sure that you wipe off the bottom um, of like the cane of the walker, wipe off any of the extra sludge, ice, and then always store those inside um, as, you know, as much as you can, because again, it's very cold outside. And then here's just some um, different 
assistive technology that you can look at, uh, the one on the very left, that's just, uh, a di just a different type of grip. It's insulating, you know, to keep your hands warm. Um, it's got a good grip on there. The middle one, that is an ice cane tip. Um, so it will actually flip up. So you can flip it up if you're inside or if you're just walking on um, just straight pavement. But if you're walking through um, snow or ice, you can flip that down and have that ice cane tip and just provide um, a little bit more traction. And then that last one is just, uh, it's a walker. It could be, it can attach to a walker or a cane. Um, so again, just, you know, some extra lighting to make sure that you can see the icy spots um, or you can see water. That's always a good idea. As far as wheelchairs, um, if you have a powered wheelchair, just make sure that you keep the, the batteries fully charged. Um, it being so cold, those might die a little bit faster. So just kind of keep them, keep that in mind. Um, check brakes on manual wheelchairs, make sure that all of that is in good um, working order. Um, and then just like your car, make sure that you check the tires, make sure that they have um, good tread on them. Um, or on the next slide, we will talk about um, some different types of tires that you can use uh, during the winter for your wheelchair. Um, and then again, wipe off any of that sludge, salt, ice, um, whenever you get inside and store um, any kind of wheelchair inside. And then those, um, the tires that I was talking about, so you can swap those, you know, a lot of times wheelchair tires are uh, you know, very smooth. They don't have a whole lot of like uh, tread on them. Um, so, you know, you can trade it out for uh, a tire that has, you know, like that's a little bit nubbier. And then that bottom one too, uh, that is actually, instead of having to switch out your entire tire, it's just an additional piece that will go over your wheelchair tire um, to provide some more traction there. So that might be a better option if you're like in and out, um, then you could just take that off. Um, and then those the two middle ones, uh, those are just like a powered wheelchair option, like an attachment. So they're meant to attach to um, just a regular manual wheelchair. But, you know, as you're like wheeling through the snow and things like that, that can be a little bit hard to do. So attaching um, these like powered options make it a little bit easier to navigate like through the ice and the snow. That first one will just attach to uh, the front of your wheelchair frame. And then, you know, you almost kind of write it like a, like a motorized tricycle type thing. Um, and then the bottom one, you attach that wheel portion to the back of the wheelchair. And there's a little knob that you can turn to go faster, slower. Um, so, and again, those, you know, having that powered option, those, you know, will not only help you go, but they will help you stop too. And then the far right one, um, those are wheel blades. I would only suggest those um, if you're going to be out in the snow for a while or even for like recreational purposes. Those probably wouldn't be good if you're just going from your house to your car and there's just a little bit of snow. I wouldn't recommend that um, attachment for that instance. But, you know, if you're out in the snow, you know, maybe playing with your kids and they want to go sledding or things like that. Um, that would be a good attachment for that. And then just thinking about your ramps, your lifts, your walkways, make sure that you have a plan for snow removal before the snow comes. Um, don't be like me and be getting a snow shovel at Home Depot as it's snowing. Um, you might not have the best luck. Um, so make sure that you have a plan for that. Make sure that any ramps that you have have a non-slip surface. So I know sometimes people will have uh, like metal ramps. Uh, make sure that, you know, if it doesn't have a non-slip surface, add some kind of grip tape, some kind of paint. That's even, I mean, that's good for all the time, even just like rain, but especially the snow. Apply salt as you need it and make sure that it has some time to work before you go and use it. Uh, check the condition of all your handrails. If if you start to slip, you're going to want to grab onto your handrail. And if your handrail is not sturdy, then both you and the handrail are going down. So make sure that you check those uh, before you actually need those. 
And then always, you know, wear gloves, especially if you have like a metal handrail. And then remember your sunglasses. Snow can cause glare. Um, thankfully, we, I mean, not thankfully, but we have really haven't had very many sunny days with the snow, but you know, that can cause a lot of glare. So it can kind of hide some ice, um, some, you know, wet conditions. So having some sunglasses is always beneficial in that situation. And then thinking about snow removal, if you're a renter, it could potentially be the landlord's responsibility to remove the snow. So double check your lease. Um, more than likely, if it's an apartment, it's the landlord's responsibility. But if you're renting a house, it might be your responsibility. So just know before the snow comes whose responsibility it's going to be to remove that snow. And then the safest way um, to prevent a, a fall in the snow and the ice is to not get out in the snow and ice. So if you can have a family member, um, a neighbor, you know, even if you can hire, hire a local snow removal company to come shovel your sidewalk and driveway, that would be the best situation. Um, reach out to your community. There are some snow removal services that they might offer um, free or discounted rate for those um, elderly or disabled. I, I was kind of looking for the Kansas City area and I even looked for the St. Louis area um, and I didn't really find a whole lot. I found some on the Kansas side, uh, but you never know. You don't know until you ask. So always kind of look around for that. And then if you're looking at um, electric snow removal options, try to opt for cordless because that's just one less thing to trip over. And then here's just some different um, snow removal devices. That first one is just, um, it's just a shovel with some wheels. So something else to keep in mind too, um, not only do you have to worry about falls, um, but you don't wanna injure yourself trying to remove your snow. You don't wanna like, throw, throw out your back or anything like that. Um, so that just kind of makes it easier to push the snow. Um, some people have even used, you know, like a leaf blower and, if the snow is light enough, that could be a good option to get most of that snow out of the way. You still might need to shovel a little bit, um, but that could help get quite a bit of that out of the way. Uh, that very right one is an electric snow shovel. Um, I've seen videos of that. I mean, they look like they work amazingly. I haven't used one personally. Um, if they work as good as they look, then uh, that's a very easy snow removal option. And then those um, kind of bottom two ones, those are actually heated, um, like heated stairway mats and heated ramp mats. So you can just turn those on, I guess, and then that, that'll just melt the snow away. So then you don't even have to worry about getting out and shoveling and removing that snow um, because it's going to heat it and, you know, ideally melt it all away. As far as food, um, again, you want to keep a well-stocked fridge have plenty of non-perishables available, uh, especially if you know that the snow is coming. And then if you don't have to leave, don't. That's that's the best option if you know it's icy out, it's snowy out. Um, try not to leave. Try to make sure that you are either stocked beforehand or um, look at some different options for getting food. So uh, consider a grocery pickup. Then you don't have to get out of the car. You don't have to worry about, you know, as long as you can drive there, um, somebody will bring the groceries out to you. So then you don't even have to worry about, you know, walking across the parking lot, having to carry any groceries, anything like that. Um, and that's a pretty reasonably priced option. I uh, I just did that for the first time a few weeks ago. And um, I did it through Aldi and they only charged me like, I think it was like a two or three dollar charge for grocery pickup. Um, so that that was much more reasonable um, than I expected. Um, some of the other options that might be a little bit pricier, um, if you have like grocery delivery or food delivery, um, it's a great way to not leave your house. Um, but again, it might just be a little bit pricier. And then having a weekly meal service, that will ensure that you always have food on a, uh, delivered on a regular basis. Um, I personally do HelloFresh. And I have not had to worry about, um, you know, if, if it's snowing or anything, it still comes. I don't have to pay extra 
depending on the weather. They will still come to my door every, they deliver to me every single Monday. Um, so I at least know I have some meals prepared through that. And then here's just some different options um, for food delivery. There's uh, there's DoorDash, GrubHub's, or GrubHub, Uber Eats. Um, again, those might be a little bit pricier uh, because you're not only paying for the price of the food, but you're paying for the delivery. Um, and usually a tip goes along with the delivery driver. Uh, so if you can plan ahead and uh, avoid that, that would be the best. Uh, those are also great options. Um, Instacart will deliver, uh, they will go grocery shopping for you and deliver those, um, deliver your groceries. Some grocery stores will also do that. Um, I know Hy-Vee will do that and I believe Walmart will do that as well. And then um, again, those meal services, HelloFresh, Home Chef, Dinnerly, there's, there's so many out there um, that you can either, you know, the, the cheaper option is to get the, the meal prep services. Um, so you still have to make the meal yourself, but they send you everything that you need. Um, and then there's some other options too that will send you everything that's that you just heat up and it's already made for you. Um, and then again, grocery pickup, so you don't have to get out of the car. Um, I know Aldi, Hy-Vee, Walmart, I think maybe even Price Chopper, they will all do that. And then just think about proper footwear. Um, this picture is a joke. Please do not wear Crocs when it's icy, snowy out. There is no tread on those. So that's probably not gonna offer um, a whole lot of traction. Um, but some other proper footwear, make sure that you have, you know, like winter boots that have a good um, anti-slip grip on them. Also make sure that they are well insulated um, and that they're waterproof too, especially having to walk around in the snow. Um, if you don't have waterproof uh, boots, then that's going to cause a whole other issue uh, by having freezing feet. So that's not, you know, very safe either. And then these other two options. So that middle one, um, that's called, I think they call them like stable icers. So that, that is an attachment that will go um, around your shoe. So if you have some, you know, boots that you really want to wear that maybe don't have the best, um, you know, traction on the bottom, you can just put these on around it and then just wear those outside to provide you a little extra stability. Um, same with the yak tracks. Those will go around your shoe and um, provide you a little extra traction there. Some um, adaptive winter clothing. So keep in mind that if you have a wheelchair user, obviously they're not going to be up walking around, um, you know, kind of keeping themselves warm. Whereas uh, somebody who who can be up walking around, you know, you can kind of warm yourself up um, that way, keep yourself moving. So for those that are wheelchair users and they're outside and they're just sitting there, they're probably going to get colder a lot faster. So that uh, that first one that's almost like a like wheelchair, like sleeping bag, it looks really warm. Um, so that's a good option. Um, like a wheelchair poncho. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting in and out of your coat. You have a poncho that you can just throw over your other clothes um, to provide you a little extra warmth. Um, and then specifically a wheelchair blanket. So it doesn't um, fall down. It doesn't get caught um, in the wheels or anything. That one is meant to tie around the uh, armrest or like the wheelchair frame. Um, that one even specifically has like a little pocket to kind of hold your things, which is really nice. Um, also just think about like some additional like leg warmers, boot warmers. Um, if you're, you know, if you're sitting in a wheelchair, keep your feet, you know, you always want to keep your extremities warm. So having something like that just to kind of keep your feet extra warm. Um, and then if you're at home to having some anti-slip socks. Uh, that's always good for any time, especially if you have um, like anything other than carpet, if you have like hardwood or, or tile flooring, um, just having those anti-slip socks is always beneficial. And then some other things, um, 
having some just like accessible pants. So I know like right now we're probably wearing a lot more layers than what we would usually do, which if you're, you know, in the bathroom trying to get all of that off, that can, um, you know, pose a, a, an extra fall risk. Um, and it's just kind of difficult to do to try to get all of that off. Um, especially if you have like additional bathroom needs, like if you have, um, a catheter or, um, if an individual does wear like a diaper or anything like that, that can be hard to get all of that off. So just thinking about, you know, pants that have, um, you know, additional buttons, zippers, um, just kind of easy access uh, to get to all of that. So maybe you don't have to take everything off and you can just, you know, open like the front flap or um, something like that. Um, as far as uh, shoes, so those two shoes, um, you can see that the zipper goes all the way around to the front. Uh, I know I've personally struggled, you know, getting on boots, um, trying to pull them up. Um, so if you're in a situation, especially if you can't sit down and get your shoes on, um, this just provides a little bit easier of an option. Um, and even for those that wear like, uh, like foot braces, this just helps you, um, you know, get your shoes on a little bit easier. And then right below that, those are, um, adaptive mittens. So, you know, when you're thinking about like, you know, winter attire, mittens are going to be easier to get on than gloves as is, because then you don't have to worry about getting each finger in. Um, you can just have the, you know, slide the mitten on. Um, and then this provides just an, an additional layer to make it a little bit easier where you can unzip it, slide your hand in and zip it back. Um, and then thinking about coats too, obviously having your coat um, closed up, that's going to keep you warmer. Um, so having, uh, these are just coats that have like uh, magnetic closures. So if an individual has difficulty, um, you know, with zippers, with buttons, especially if they're going to be in a situation where like they go to school or they go to like a day facility where they might not be, you know, around somebody that can help them, um, having something that they can do like that on their own um, is going to be the best situation for them. So as far as travel, um, this is... These next few slides, these are good all the time, um, but especially, you know, during the winter, you want to make sure that uh, you're doing everything that you can to prevent any kind of fall. Because again, you have the ice and you have the snow that um, kind of just adds to that. So if you are a person um, that is just kind of a fall risk in general, um, you might want to think about some of these additional items for every, you know, every season, but especially for the winter um, to try to prevent those falls. So that first one is called um, a swivel seat and it does exactly um, what it sounds like. It will turn your body. So instead of having to get out, you know, typically we get out like one leg at a time, um, that will turn your body entirely. So then you can kind of, um, you know, hoist yourself up and, and get out with both feet at a time. Um, and then you can kind of use the car too to stabilize yourself. Uh, that's that middle one. Um, I believe it's just called a lift aid. So that's designed for uh, somebody like a caregiver who has to help somebody out of the car, or even if it's just like a spouse. Um, one if you know the person that's helping will hold on to one end, and the person getting out of the car will hold on to the other end. Um, so it's just an extra point instead of having to like grab onto each other and grab each other's hand, um, you know, especially if you're an elderly couple and you yourself might not be very stable, but then you're trying to help your spouse out of the car as well. Um, situations like that happen all the time. Um, and then both of you could end up hurt and then that's a whole ordeal. Um, so this just provides, um, just a little extra support lifting somebody out of the car. Um, that way, you know, they're not holding on to you and potentially taking you down if, um, you know, if, if one of you does fall. 
And then that last one is called a handy bar. Um, so that just provides a, a little extra support so you can kind of use both hands. Um, you know, you stick it in uh, the side, like where the door closes. Um, so when the doors open, you can use the car door and then you can use the handy bar and use both hands to, um, to push yourself up when getting out. And just some things around the home. So again, the risk of falls around the house, it's not you know particularly seasonal. There are more risks during the winter, but these are just some things to keep in mind all the time. Um, so winter, you know, we know that winter we have, um, you know, it gets darker earlier. So we have much longer night than we do in the summer. Um, and uh, and the temperature changes quite a bit. So you always want to keep make sure that you keep your floors dry. Um, you know, you might track in the snow and the water. Um, you know, try to take your shoes off as soon as you get inside. I personally, I have dogs too, and they track in plenty of, you know, ice and, and sludge and all of that. Um, so I always keep a towel by my door so I can make sure that I wipe off their feet and then I can wipe off the floor around it too, um, just to make sure that that doesn't pose um, an additional fall risk for me. You know, a lot of times I know we want to keep the the, ther the thermostat low so our bill's not quite as high, um, but that can affect your muscles. Um, I think I even read something that, that said, uh, like for older individuals, even if you're keeping it at like 62, 63, um, you know, for our older individuals, that can pose, you know, additional um, safety risks. Um, I think they even said, like, you can even get hypothermia, like, even at that temperature, um, you know, if you're older and have a hard, harder time regulating um, temperature. So just think about things like that. Um, and, you know, also just understand that as it is colder, it might take you a little bit longer to get up. You might need some additional support to stand up um and then and then again just winter uh, having good lighting too um you know as i said it gets darker earlier plus you not only have you know all the water and the ice you want to make sure that you can see any wet spots so um make sure you have good lighting in your house at night um, just to be aware of all of that And then these are things that they are always in season, um, you know, things that you just might want to consider. Um, that first one is just a reacher. That way you don't have to bend over um, to pick something up. You can just use that and uh, grab things off the floor like that. And then um, especially if you use your phone um, like as a uh, like a alerting device, I like guess an emergency device. Um, so, you know, maybe instead of paying for something like life alert, you know, you're just like, oh, I, I have my phone with me all the time. Um, well, make sure that you actually do have your phone with you because if you fall and uh, even if your phone is like in the room, but it's just out of reach, uh, that's not going to be beneficial to you if you need help standing up. So that is just... Uh, Scout has 3D printed a ton of those. Um, so if you are interested in any of those, uh, make sure that you reach out to Scout. So it's just a little piece. Um, you'll still need like a like a poppet or I think it's, they're, they're called poppet things that attach to your phone. Um, and then you slide this, uh, this additional piece around it and then you close that poppet. And then it essentially turns your, your phone into... Um, a lanyard. So then you always have your phone around your neck. Um, that way, anytime you are walking around, you leave the room. Um, if anything happens, you have your phone with you. Um, this is great for travel too. Um, I don't know how many times I just throw my phone in my purse and then I can't find it, you know, while I'm, uh, while I'm traveling. So, um, and if you get in a car accident too, you know, everything kind of gets shuffled. So, Having your phone around you all the time is always beneficial. All right. Uh, we ended just a little bit early, um, but I'm going to let Angelina talk about, uh, we have a survey for next month, um, you know, just to kind of go through uh, 
what we're going to do for next month because we're going to gear our next mod towards this survey. So I'll let Angelina touch on that. Yeah, so we actually do have quite a few um, questions in chat. So we're going to go ahead and go over those really quick before I get into the rest. Okay, um, perfect. Somebody was wanting to know if there's a way to get the electric assist paid for. So I, I did look into, um, there, there were some programs like for, you know, again, for people like with disabilities or people that, um, you know, like are on low income, especially like elderly that are on a very uh, restricted income. So there were some different programs out there. I think you just kind of have to look into um, like the qualification and what your area will cover because everybody's area is different and everybody's, you know, um, electric company may be different. So uh, I would definitely like look into that for um, for your area specifically. Um, another question we have was somebody looking for links or suggestions for wheel assist devices. Um, with our mods, we started sending out a device list when we send out the recording and the slides as well. So that device list will include links from all the things that Kara talked about today. Um, Kara, I don't know if you have one on hand that you want to send in the chat now, um, but um, I don't have one right now, but I'll put it on the, the um, that form so we sent out. Um, and then we also had one asking, what would you suggest for rural people who don't have these options? And that was around the time when you were talking about um, food delivery options and, and that kind of stuff. So for that, again, I would just make sure that, you know, you have um, you have everything stocked beforehand and just really rely on your community for that. Um, I know my I have family that they live like in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it takes like 30 minutes just to get to like the nearest grocery store. Um, so they have um, they have like a deep freeze at home. Um, they always keep that very well stocked because uh, you never know, especially on like those gravel roads um, you know, who, if you're going to be able to get out. Um, so th that would be my suggestion is just make sure that you're really well stocked for any type of situation at any time. And then the last question that we have in there so far is asking if there's any other solutions you could think of for keeping feet warm for wheelchair users with poor circulation. Um, this person wears good waterproof and warm boots and wool socks, but sometimes it still isn't enough. Yeah, I, I know a lot of times, I mean, I have good boots and, um, and it can be hard. Um, I would suggest something like, um, you know, like they have those hand warmers, but they also have ones that are meant to go, um, inside your shoes and they'll, they'll like stick on. And I, anytime I've used those, those have kept my feet super warm. I mean, almost to the point where I'm like sweating and I have to take it off. Um, and I think those usually last about eight hours. So, um, Something like that uh, is a good option. All right. So those are the questions that we have for now. And um, if anybody else has any additional questions, feel free to go put those in there. And then there's a couple of things that I want to touch on before we get to talking about next month. Um, somebody said that they have also seen electric shoe inserts, um, like a an additional sole to put in your shoe that is is heated. So that would be a good option as well. Um, so this is just our um, mod series schedule for 2024. This was our first month back, so we've got um, all of our dates set. Um, for the benefit series, again, that's the second Wednesday of every month from 1230 to 130. We're still finalizing some topics for that. February 14th, though, is going to be on ABLE accounts. Um, and then for our technology series. That's the fourth Wednesday of every month from 1230 to 130. And February 28th is our next tech mod. And our topic is technology and you, which I'm going to circle back to in just a moment. Um, just some other things. Uh, UMKC is also the houses the Missouri Family to Family, the statewide resource center for Missouri. Um, their website is great. It's got a lot of good resources on there, such as the Good Life Groups for interactive peer learning, um, collaboration. They also host the Charting the Life Course and Family to Family quarterly stakeholder meetings. Um, 
And then we also have a lot of additional trainings on charting the life course. If that's something you are interested in from today, um, we have a life course foundations webinars on our website there um, that are free introductory, introductory webinars. Those are a great place to start. Um, and then we also have a skill building series and ambassador series, and they all progressively get more in depth um, with the skills that you're learning. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen for just a second. So for February, we're going to do technology and you, like I mentioned. Um, we want that to be geared towards what you all want to hear presented. So we have a quick little four question survey for you guys to fill out. Um, that way we can gear our presentation towards um, the things that you want to hear about. So I'm going to go ahead and send that link now in the chat. And is everybody able to see the messages in the chat? If somebody might just- I know I can see it. Okay. Um, should be fine. Sometimes the webinar chat gets a little funky. Um, perfect. So, um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, that would be great for us to get February going for something that, um, you guys want to hear about. And I will also send that link, um, when we do our typical follow-up. So you'll get that link again, um, in case you don't get a chance to fill it out now. Um, just want to thank everybody for joining us this month. Apologies again for the technical difficulties and Kara not having a camera. Um, but if you have any additional questions, we'll hang out. Um, otherwise, thank you all for joining us and have a good day. Thank you, guys.